everyone. Yeah. Oh my God, so many people. So welcome to the 2023 Blender Conference. Yeah. So my name is Tom Rosendahl. I'm the chairman of Blender Foundation. And today I want to talk about the very important but boring topic, the GNU General Public License. Or is it called the GNU GPL? Because why? Well, if there was one thing remarkable of last year was that really, literally, everybody starts using Blender. So whether it's big film studios like ILM, DreamWorks, uh, Sony Imageworks, uh, Animal Logic, uh, the games companies are all using Blender, Guerrilla here in Amsterdam, they're using it. Uh, the automobile industry, for some reason, every German manufacturer is using it, but also in America, Korea, Japan, they're using Blender, design companies, architects, film academies. It's really amazing. But, they said, there's one thing holding us back, and that's the <laughs> legal departments, <laughs> especially the big ones, because they say, yeah, 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 bro, the Blender, huh? free software, the new CPL, this will contaminate our IP. Huh? If we start using Blender and we make one little mistake with a piece of Blender code that ends up in our product, we have to make everything we own open source. We have to give everything away, or maybe everything will become property of the Blender Foundation, right? <laughs> and this kind of myths are really being told by lawyers and legal departments. So I let the lawyers talk to lawyers, right? I'm not going to bother, bother you with this. But we do have a lawyer ourselves now, the Free the Blender uh, Foundation. And if you have a big corporation and a legal department, connect with me, and I will connect the lawyers together. But for everybody else here, today I want to uh, put an end to this horrible myth of the GPL being viral, right? As if it's an ink blob polluting your beautiful clear water, or if it's a piece of dog poo under your shoe and you walk around your house and everything starts smelling. Well, <laughs> it's not, right? This is not true. And to show that, I prepared a little demonstration to get a better metaphor for how open source works. <coughs> so to start with, I want you all to realize that the GNU CPL is about copyright. Right? It's all about copyrights. And here is a visualization of your rights. Right? This is what you own. Your privacy, this is your data, this is your browsing history. And if you are an artist or if you are not an artist, it doesn't matter. If you make something, like a nice drawing, right? Let's make something nice drawing here. Then this is yours, right? And you put it in the box and you say, mine, right? You own it, your copyright, that's how it works. Now, for this simulation, I want to expand the context a little bit. Right? This is not my house. This is going to be the company where you work for, the institution, uh, huh? big companies, uh, they hire lots of people, so imagine I'm an employee, I'm working for the company, and I also find a box that is the corporate IP. Here's the copyright from the company. And I can still make drawings, right? That's what you do as an artist, you work for companies, and then you say, yeah, I made a drawing, but this goes to the corporate box. Very sad, but that's how it works. Huh? In the business, otherwise the company cannot do business anyway, right? This is how things work. Good, so far so good. Inside of companies, you have uh, another box. Here. This is what we call external IP. This is everything the company doesn't belong. Huh? For example, a magic trick. <laughs> a rabbit, a raven rabbit, this is Ubisoft. Or for example, I find here, ah, my good friend, here, the little. 
Girl with the Frog, owned by Disney. It's also not my stuff. Uh, look what's there. Ah, I see. Here there's uh, a tools like Maya, or there is Random Man. Here yeah, there's Photoshop. Wait. So, what can I do with Photoshop? Ah, of course, I make a drawing, uh, something here. And this drawing is my drawing because Photoshop is still here. And I can give this to the company. And the company can also decide to sell it to other companies because in this box is also the IP from your clients. And if you are a sensible business, you don't mix those things up, right? Because that keeps things clear and simple. So far, everybody get it? Because in recent days, another box popped up in businesses, the free software box. Ooh. So what's in it? Wow, also all kinds of nice tools right here. Look at that. Grease pencil. So that's interesting. <laughs> so let's see what happens if I make a drawing with it, right? Yeah, so this is super cool. Hey. My drawing, that grease pencil is here. Company can still put it in their IP or sell it to their clients if they wish. So far, so good. This is just three different boxes, three different types of copyright. And the very sensible people will just separate these things and don't mix it up. But there's one big difference, right? So imagine I'm a freelancer and I leave the company and will work for another company and say, hey, I'm going to take my work with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or maybe I could take my tools, right? That's what, because it's <laughs> not working. But here is this box. <laughs> ah, this is what? This is my box. <laughs> so that's <laughs> what free software is about. <coughs> And it's not so much, well, about what's in the boxes. What this is about is what does the copyright holder in turn, eh, the owners of things. Eh? The corporation wants to have a box because they want to do business. They want to do servicing, they want to work with clients, so they want to make products and sell it. So they have to make sure that what they own is clear. You know. Here is your clients, right? If you uh, want to make movies for others or games, and uh, you work with other companies, you make sure that what is here is belongs to them. And that's in their interest, because they want to make money with it. They don't want you to do that. They will make the money. And this thing is, is public copyright. Uh, that's what the free software makes so powerful, is public copyright. Uh, there's a large community of Blender contributors that own parts of Blender, and they say, this has to stay free. This stays free, you can do within the company, whatever you want, but what's in here, you can always take it with you and do whatever you like with it. That's the first key difference between the boxes. <coughs> now there's another thing, and I'm going to make it more interesting, because people, of course, want to mix, right? That's what you have copyrights for. You want to make all kinds of interesting combinations. So look to see what happens if I take, I have to start digging a little bit here, Maya, right? And I want to have this in my own box, right? <laughs> of course you can't, right? Because this is Autodesk property, and you cannot say I want to do anything with Maya what I want. Similar goes for this wonderful piece of Blender code, and you say, well, I want to. Uh, this copyright is also protected because the Blender Foundation and the Blender community wants to keep this free. You cannot lock it up. It's an important aspect. The other way around, however, that is possible. So you can say, for example, well, what I did before, I have my drawings, and I say I give it to the client box. Clients are usually fine with it, but most of them will say, but you have to give us the copyrights, right? Because there is, uh, we don't accept mixed copyrights in our movies. We'll make it way too complicated. We want to have your things. So what if you, as a business, say, I have a beautiful brush, right? <laughs> and I want to contribute that to Blender, right? Because it's right. 
the blender organization will say that's nice, you can have, we would like to have this brush, but you have to accept this to become GNU GPL licensed or compatible. The best thing is you don't have to give up on this. You simply do a little magic trick and you make a copy. <laughs> but, and this goes to the orange box and you can keep this yourself and do whatever you want with it. So that's what possible. Now, for this simulation to work, mixing up copyrights has a different way. You cannot put it in the boxes, but you can do it outside of the boxes, right? So you can say, well, I have in my studio, I have here another tool, and I get uh, here, this is Renderman, I get something for myself, this is my software, and I got a piece of Blender here, oh, so here is another piece of Blender, and I want to mix it up and call this my pipeline, right? That's what you can do. Uh, supposed, of course, that you paid for the licenses for uh, the and the Mayas and stuff. But with Blender, you can give it and mix it and do whatever in the company that you want. You can even say, well, here, huh? I'm going to make my own version of Blender and I'll give it to everyone in the business. That's not a problem. One thing you have to be careful with that is if you take it out again, you get <laughs> license conflict. Because what you need to do is separate it. But this is what you own. This is what you don't own. But you can sell this product to your clients and say, well, just go to uh, GitHub or whatever, or Blender.org, get the software, and in your own place, you can put it back together and use it how you wish. So in that sense, the free software gives you also a lot of extra freedom that you cannot do with the commercial boxes. <coughs> So now let's go to a couple of more practical examples. Email. Yeah, that's an email. <coughs> Dear Blender, I've been making this amazing piece of code for Blender and I want to sell it as a plugin on my own terms. After all, I wrote it, right? It's mine and I want to make a fair living with my hard work. Needful coder from far, far away, right? Look, uh, this is my code. Or is it? The Blender code, right? That's the problem. So how do you define the difference? Well, first of all, Blender is a C code, it's a C++, we have Objective C, there's even JavaScript in Blender a little bit, and there's lots of Python. Python scripts of Blender are same as the C code, it's just the development language that we make things with. That's why Python scripts are Blender code. And you can also say simply, well, does it need Blender to run, right? then it becomes here. Is it independent, like a fluid simulation library or something that you made that doesn't need Blender to run? Then it's yours. Okay, but the add-on developer still would like to sell things under their own terms. Well, it's not really 100% what they made. So what they have to do is the same thing again. Just separate it out and say, well, dear client, this is what you can buy right, from me, and here is the free software component, and just go to your own place, put it back together, and have fun with how you wish to use it. Next bill. <coughs> so, dear Blender, we are a large studio working with other studios a lot, and we provide access to our infrastructure and software via a remote connection, like VPN. We wish to use a modified Blender internally to integrate with the pipeline. Our lawyers say that we cannot do that for Blender because that would be considered distribution. CTO of a streaming giant incorporated studio in Hollywood. Good. Well, this is the same thing again. That's what I demonstrated before, right? You have this mixed pipeline. You put all kinds of things together here. And that's what I learned, especially in the uh, last SIGGRAPH, is that nearly every big studio, if they are a member of the Motion Picture Association of America, all the studios have to make sure that every computer where even one byte of the movie available is not allowed to be on the internet. 
So there is no internet connection on any workstation or any computer that they are using. Uh, because uh, they don't want this to be contaminated with other IP, and of course they don't want this to leak. So everybody is working on movies, it does not have internet on the computer. And even more, what they do nowadays is they make this mix and put it on servers, and then they say, well, you provide remote access. Right? So you got your internet connection to the table, and then you say, okay, I'm going to use the stuff that's over there. Uh, provided, of course, that you made a deal with Autodesk and all the others, for Blender, that's not a problem, because this is not considered distribution for the GNU CPL. So please, streaming people, go ahead, use Blender. <coughs> Last email. <coughs> so, as a pipeline TD, I find it really hard to maintain our own version of Blender. Please, ah, the uniform plugin API so we can extend Blender easier. Uh, for Studio, for Max, whatever. We get this a lot, right? People think that Blender is difficult, and if it would have a plugin API, it would be amazing. Well, let me show you how that looks like. First, clean up my stuff, and I'll show you the plugin version of Blender. This is the plugin version of Blender. So, that's it here. Smaller, leaner, but it doesn't fully work anymore. And to make it work, you have to plug in the stuff from yourself, right, here, and plug in stuff from all kinds of commercial vendors that also have cables, if I had the cable in the right box, right? So, <laughs> and uh, yeah, this plugging in is always difficult to do. So, here is the plugin version of Blender, right? And for that, this, ladies and gentlemen, is what is people call open source. Uh, this is what corporations like to see. And this is free software, right? Because the difference is that we, Blender Foundation and Blender Community, want to make this box complete. Everything that is here should allow you to make anything that you ever would dream of. So this is your ultimate freedom, right? because it's yours, it's mine, and it's ours. Right. <laughs> wow. This is the first time I fully do this, 17 minutes. So I have five, five more minutes. I still have some more slides, and I will do that a little bit more on a up-tempo, because I want to show a couple of highlights of what we did in the last year. It's always so cool to see. We have an annual report. Uh, you can download it on blender.org. Uh, it's important for our foundation to be transparent. Uh, what's interesting to see especially is the money, uh, even though uh, the uh, in 22, there was still the corona stuff, and the industry was collapsing a little bit. Tech industry was firing people. And we kept a little bit on the same rate, and we are doing actually very good. And for that reason, I can, can say that we have like over 50 people on the contract last year. <laughs> this includes development clients, part-timers, yeah, people that get a little bit of money, and it includes people in the Blender headquarters in Amsterdam. But it's a lot, it's a lot, there's a lot of people. Um, we made a new projects website. This is the site for uh, developers to collaborate together. Um, we want to do this in uh, the box, the Blender uh, concept is that we want to have our own infrastructure and have it, not always the best solution, but it does keep us free and independent. So go to the projects.blender.org website if you want to be active as a developer. You can see more about it. We made three releases, and this is the fantastic video of last year.
<laughs> so yeah, <clears throat> more than 15 million downloads of the software, only what we can count, right? And we only count people who don't have ad blockers or whatever, or they don't allow, if they don't allow cookies and ad advertisement, we don't even count this. So I can easily say that we are 20, 30 million people downloading Blender every year. And so, but you can also see the Steam and the Windows Store are coming up a little bit. <coughs> we made a film, Pet Project. I uh, watched it online. There were some talks on the conference about it. I'm very happy also about the documentary series. Uh, the Blender Heights, we already have three episodes where you can see the people behind the project, how they live, what they do, how it works. Episode four is coming very soon. I think next week or the week after that will be online. Currently, we work on so many awesome topics. Huh? The, uh, this will be also part of the conference. So I'm not going to bore you with all of it. Uh, Blender 4 is coming next week. <laughs> really? Yeah? Good. And Project that we keep doing, of course, that every technology project we keep going on. We we'll want to have much more fun with simulation and real time, real time viewports, but everything I'm going to have to become real time, controlled by nodes, of course. And I'm very happy with the progress of the Animation 25 project. Uh, they still have one full year, and then it's 25, right? So uh, we can still use uh, animation developers, but the team is already uh, making the great progress, and I'm sure there is a talk also at the conference uh, where you can get updates on it. <coughs> the Blender Studio, also a part of the headquarters, are updating the whole pipeline section, right? because uh, for us, pipeline means free open source software. And if you, as a studio, want to use Blender or other open source, uh, we make sure that you, with open source software, can be fully productive for everything, including project management and the whole administration that is behind that. We are working on a new film. Uh, I think there will be also some snippets visible in, the, in this conference. This is going to be completely different, abstract and artistic. Very nice. Beacon LA, right? <laughs> So, <coughs> unfortunately, this event has been sold out already for like six weeks before. And it's horrible. I hate it to disappoint so many people. We had so many people begging to for last minute tickets, and we had to say so many times no. So I hope that now everybody will go to the LA event, right? And that next year it will be a bit more quiet. No? no? no, no okay. <laughs> We already did make a reservation for this venue for next year, but I uh, hope uh, the LA conference will take away a little of the, the stress here. Another thing that I want to announce is uh, that we are making December the donation campaign month, right? because I remember this slide, uh, there's this little thing there. Um, it's, uh, it's great, but we got lots of donations from the community, but we don't really push this a lot, right? Like what Wikipedia is doing with flashlights everywhere to remind people to donate. And even though this is a lot of money, right, this is like 4% of what people spend on the blender market, right? And that's uh, a little bit something we could do better. And I also want this to be solved in a way to keep us independent, because it's not good that like 70, 75% of your income is coming from the corporations. And the community should be at the same level, right? So that we are going to try that in December. <coughs> Good. Good, yes? <laughs> Last year I announced the Blender Lab, an eh, initiative to secure the future of Blender. Like what is going to happen in the 30s, right? How are we going to deal with all this stuff with metaverses and AIs and uh, what is going to happen uh, with computing and creation in the coming decade? And if Blender wants to stay relevant, we have to be ready for that. And you can't uh, wait with that because we keep making new versions of Blender day to day. It work keeps going. And if we keep doing that in five years, we might lose it and then become obsolete. So I would like to have funding. I'm uh, looking forward to get a small team of people to work fully independent of rethinking Blender, rethinking open source creation, 
and make something that can take like five years. I don't care, but that's something that we have a future with Blender still. <coughs> so, thanks for listening. I wish you all a great conference, and special thanks to the sponsors.